I get in here and then we'll get going. Just a few reminders to put yourselves on mute and put your videos on because we love to see your faces. All right, let me go get my glasses since they want my face. Okay. So it looks like we have pretty much everybody in here at this point. I'll reintroduce myself. So hello, welcome to Live From Your Laptop. I know I'm not the typical face that you see. I'm Kelsey Walsh. I'm on the community events team here at Clavio. Filling in for Morgan this week. She's having a little bit of technical difficulties. She left us to go to Puerto Rico for the month um, to enjoy the nice sunny weather and to get out of our house for a little bit while we're quarantined. So since she's having those event um, internet issues, I'm taking over, so bear with me and understand this is my first time hosting live from your laptop, so it's all new to me. Um, so a little bit about live from your laptop. So for those of you that have joined us in the past, thanks for coming back and tuning in again. We appreciate it. Um, for those who are new and never heard of live from your laptop before today, welcome to the show. Uh, we like to keep it real here on Live From Your Laptop, where we talk um, to some of the most up and coming and fastest growing businesses, owners, and marketers. In the next hour, you'll get actionable tips for growing your business and making the most out of Clavio. After, we do a little fun activity just to take our minds off work and learning something new. Um, so here's a game plan for the next hour. We're going to be chatting with the co-founder um, of Mented, Amanda, and their head of marketing, Chandra. You'll be inspired by their story. And then when we're going to tell Mark, we're going to talk marketing strategy and give you some amazing examples from their Clavio account um, that they're going to take us through. I always rope in some of the questions that get submitted by you guys, the community, when you all registered. But also, we really encourage you guys to pop some questions in the chat. We love having an interactive chat and it always makes it a great time. Um, after the chat, we're going to find your perfect shades of nude and learn some contour tips. Um, we are all about a good contour here, even though I'm here at my blank face of makeup, I could use the tips for sure. Um, and then we're going to do a giveaway of $50 worth of mented cosmetics products, which is always exciting. Um, so stay tuned for that. And okay, let's go. Um, Menta team, I'm turning it over to you guys. So let's start with Amanda kicking us off with telling us about more of who you are. And I will share my screen here in one second. Take it away, Amanda. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for having me. This is so fun. We love working with our partners and of course sharing our story. Um, I'm Amanda E. Johnson, the co-founder and chief operating officer of Minted Cosmetics, which we'll get into what all that is a little later. Uh, just a little background on me. I have a non-traditional um, entrepreneurship path. I started off in investment banking, then went into consumer marketing, a little touch of luxury retail, and now I'm in beauty running a startup. So it's been awesome to see all of those things and Minted is truly the culmination of that experience. Great. And Chandra, if you want to go ahead now. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Chandra Cooks, and I handle marketing for Mented Cosmetics, and that's all marketing. If you can think about it, <laughs> it probably falls under my team, a uh, small team, but we're mighty. And a little bit about me, um, I'm currently in Tennessee, but I live in Harlem, and uh, my background is uh, runs the gamut. It's fashion, luxury, CPG, sustainable, cleaning tools, um, you name it, I've probably touched it, which I think is great when it comes to marketing because then you can bring all of those different facets to where you are. And uh, hopefully you guys are gonna love some of the things we got to say. Definitely, we are so excited to have you guys on the show today. Um, so let me pull up here. I have some questions for you guys. Um, so tell us about Mented Cosmetics. Um, how did this idea come about and what's your mission? Yeah, um, so this is Amanda. Uh, I love this part. This is the storytelling <laughs> of the brand, which every marketer loves to, to be able to say this. but. Um, my co-founder and I met at Harvard Business School. We were both getting our MBAs. 
Um, and she had already been bitten by the startup bug, but it was quite new for me. Truly, the graduate school, business school environment is what normalized the risk of startups for me. I always thought this was just something rich people did, but everybody was doing it and everybody was failing and everybody was succeeding. And so it just felt like this thing that if you want to participate, you can. Um, and so her and I just had so much in common. We'd worked on school projects together. We were in the HBS show together, which is a, a student run variety show. And so we knew we had a lot in common. We loved all things consumer and journeys and retail and product. And so we kind of left and said, oh my God, by the way, I see Jim on the call who was in the HBS show. <laughs> this is so crazy. Um, Jim was the lead in the show, it was so wild. Um, and anyway, so we, we left uh, school and said, we don't have the idea yet, but we know we want to work together. Um, and so we would get together periodically. We were both in New York. She was in retail at Deloitte. I was in luxury retail at Barney's. And we would get together and think through ideas. And one night we were talking about, you know, life hacks, which led to beauty hacks. And I said something like, I've been trying to find the perfect new lipstick for like three years. And she was like, oh my God, me too. If you know her, you know, she's very animated and theatrical. So it was definitely this moment we remember where we had this light bulb moment that like we were two deeper skin women with plenty of disposable income and a love of beauty, but we felt left out and we felt othered. And it just didn't feel like life had to be that way. Um, and so that was our moment. That is when we said, okay, it is our problem and we are going to solve it. And we worked for a year and a half to develop the concept of the company and launched January, 2017, our founding year. So we just turned four, which is very exciting in the life of a startup. Uh, so 2017 is now like my lucky number. Um, but anyway, so Minted is short for pigmented. We are a pigment first beauty brand celebrating women of all hues, putting women of color at the forefront. We are excited about every, bringing everyday beauty staples to women everywhere. Our expertise is truly in pigmentation. So no matter who you are or what you look like, we probably have a product for you. Um, we are a DTC first company. In the last four years, we've really been thoughtful about the collection, our e-commerce community, and now retail. That's fantastic. No, and it's so exciting to just when you find a problem that you have every day and then you make it into this big business and it's something you're so passionate about. That's what I love every week on live from your laptop, even though I'm normally in the background, hearing these stories and the passion behind these products and why they've done this. That's the most exciting part about this. I love it. Um, so then jumping into another question here, what is the biggest, what have the biggest challenges been fermented when getting started? So what advice can you kind of give those listening in from the community today on how to persevere? Yeah, um, I'll say for any startup, um, one of the things that characteris um, characterizes a startup from any other type of company is being severely resource constrained. Right, and so that is the life. Um, there isn't enough time, there aren't enough people, and there certainly is never enough money to do all the things that you wanna do, right? Like we are charged with doing two things. One, um, making innovation in the space, and we are doing that with our everyday beauty, putting women of color at the forefront, and two, being competitive against the incumbents who are big and have billion dollar beauty budgets, you know, billion dollar marketing budgets. And so with those two things as our everyday challenges, there just aren't enough resources to tackle it. And so we have had to be very innovative. So I think early, those are early challenges, continue to be challenges. Mm -hmm. um, we are always looking for scrappy platforms or, uh, or rather thoughtful and efficient platforms and scrappy team members to help us tackle those challenges. Um, but that's kind of where we are. I think the other thing is as we continue to expand our collection, our product offering, we expand our community. We just wanna make sure that everyone still understands fundamentally what Minted is and why Minted exists. And that that message doesn't get muddled in our retail partners or muddled in consumers that just try us but aren't necessarily our core consumer. And so that is our job. That is part of what Chandra is charged with every day, making sure that um, very thoughtful, message about Minted and who we are and what we stand for is brought through in everything that we do. So no matter how you enter the, the Minted universe, you know what we're about. Yeah, no, and that's fantastic. And one question I have kind of going off of that is that 
from previous guests that we talked to and brands that we talked to every day, they've run into real manufacturing problems so far too. Have you guys run into any of that through COVID or anything that's affected your manufacturing process? Yeah, I'd say COVID has severely impacted our supply chain, not necessarily Mm -hmm. from a manufacturing process. Like obviously we have, uh, we manufacture around the world. And so we do have manufacturers in China, in Italy. And so as COVID spread across the world, we also were impacted by that literally country by country. Um, But what I would say is really it just, it closed, you know, Mm -hmm. our manufacturers around the world closed for some period of time and then slowly came online with limited capacity. Um, They're all now back at 100%. But I would say what has been a remaining impact of COVID on our supply chain has just been time. Um, It takes longer to book a boat to put your products on, to get it from literally wherever in the world to the port. The port in New York and New Jersey is backed up and then customs is backed up. And um, freight costs have skyrocketed. I'm not talking two to three times. I'm talking five to 10 times in certain cases. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be those lasting things as all the uh, manufacturers have come back online. It is just now, uh, you know, the rush to get your products to America. And I think that is the, the kind of space that we're all living in, where it's just very expensive to do that. Definitely. And everybody's trying to do the same thing right now. It's, it's insane, insane. Um, so why did you decide to start as an online DTC company? And how do you think that decision impacted the success you have today? Yeah, you know, it's funny because it was a very thoughtful decision. Our early decks, when we were pitching this to VCs and angels and everybody else was like, and we're going to be on shelf and we're going to change the world of brick and mortar and, you know, all of these fantastical ideas that we had. Yep. And then one of the first um, accelerators that we did back in 2017 when we launched um, was the Target Accelerator. So Target Takeoff. Um, mm-hmm. They have a clean kind of uh, personal care focused accelerator and we were in their first co- cohort. And when they really went through the nuts and bolts of what it takes to make it in uh, retail, we said, absolutely not. Like we walked away from that experience and said, we are not ready. This is our first year. Give us some time. And they actually offered to, to bring us on shelf. And we said, no, can you wait till we get ready? And they've been fantastic partners and they absolutely waited, which is fantastic. But we said, okay, we want to do two things. First, we want to roll out the collection in a very thoughtful, minted, focused way. When the minute you enter retail, they have so much influence over literally everything that you do, including your collection, what it smells like, what it looks like, what's the price point, what does the box look like? And we really always, you know, our fundamental belief is that the beauty industry hasn't gotten beauty right. So why should they be the ones telling us what to do? We want to hear from customers in our own lived experience and make the collection based off that data. So um, being DTC allowed us to do that. And we've been thoughtfully rolling out the collection with a minimum of four um, launches a year for the last four years. Um, The other thing that we wanted to do um, is really own the customer data, right? So the minute you go into retail, you get overall trend reports and overall demographic reports, but not the nuts and bolts of who these people are, what do they want, why did they come to Minted, and what's their next purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, And being able to own that data is truly what's fueling our marketing today, which Chandra can can get more and talk about. I know we're going to talk through in later later questions, but without that data, had we been wholesale first the first year, uh, we we wouldn't have had as, as much of a smart, thoughtful, and efficient marketing program that we do now, right? And it has been the culmination of those decisions that we get to do all the cool, fun things that we do with customer data now. Um, And then I I said there were two things, but truly the third thing, third reason we are DTC is money. Uh, Wholesale is absolutely the most expensive thing you will ever do. And it brings in a lot of dollars for sure. uh, But the upfront cost, you're talking product and fixtures and discounts and promotions and everything else. And none of that is is the retailer footing for you. So we needed to get all of those things in order the way that we, you know, are through our own minted perspective of the way we wanted the world to be first. Definitely. And that makes complete sense. So kind of as a follow-up on that question, um, somebody from the community asked, how do you balance your in-store presence and online presence and then mesh the two? I think I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 
what I would like to, what I say is that we, we do things in, I guess, three, three buckets. And so the first would be focusing on your customer as far as them coming to.com first, right? Their first experience with us is our.com. So what does that relationship and funnel look like? And then it's, if they go to another retailer first, how did, how do we think they got there? And then um, what is that relationship and how can we get them to go back and reap at that store? But then the third piece is if they did go to um, one of our retailers, how do I get them back to .com? And so if you think of them, then think about how we can kind of combine it together and how I can get them back to .com and what are all the things that we can do to keep them once they get back to .com or to .com for the first time um, as far as their second purchase is concerned. Then to me, you kind of have this full circle where you're always thinking about all of their journeys um, and you're treating each of them a little bit differently and then hopefully having a lasting and loyal customer regardless. Definitely. And at the end of the day, they're all people, right? So you want to treat them all individually. And I think that's the goal of many companies to do that. So you guys really do hit the nail on the head. Um, so we all know just how hard it is to gain momentum as a new brand and really build a following. So how did Mented gain traction? What specific strategies, tools, and channels did you use to grow your first customers? Yeah, um, it's funny because, well, I guess it's not funny. It's, it's truly part of this thoughtful thing. Part of the premise of the company was that women of color were being left out. And so when we went to test the product, our initial product, and say, um, you know, are we doing this right? Are we thinking about the branding right? Are we thinking about the shades right? We had to find who are the women of color beauty experts. Um, and what we found is those were not the associates in store and those were not the executives that worked at those companies because if they were, then we wouldn't have this problem that existed in beauty anyway. And so what we found were these very distinct and thoughtful online communities of uh, Black, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, South Asian beauty influencers. Mm -hmm. And they had been forever kind of under the radar. Um, they weren't the big influencers that the beauty brands were doing, but they had such high engagement, such trust, such loyalty from their consumers because they truly were the only people these customers could go to for real beauty advice. And so we said, okay, we're gonna start there. So we actually started the company by making um, handmade samples in our apartments in Harlem because manufacturers had no idea what we were talking about when we said we wanna make new lipsticks for women of color. Um, so we, we learned how to do it all on YouTube and Google and um, had the dye and the wax and all of that kind of stuff. And so we made our samples. We went on Instagram and YouTube, we DM'd every influencer that was a woman of color that had any sense of everyday beauty. And we said, hey, we have these samples and we want you to just take a look for free. Um, this is what the brand is about. These are the shades we're launching with and we'd love your honest feedback. And feedback we got, I mean, feedback for days. They <laughs> loved it, they wanted to talk about it. Um, they were doing photo shoots with it and videos with it. And that really was our early traction. You know. We didn't ask them to do those things, but influencers love to do what they want to do. And, and that has worked out for us many, many times. And so they just started posting these videos and using our sample product, which by the way, was not nice to look at. Um, <laughs> and we just started gaining a ton of followers on Instagram. Um, and they were all saying, well, where is this product? We want it. This was like early fall 2016. So before we launched where's the product we want it? This influencer said that you have it. And we we're like, oh my God, like we don't have it yet. And so we were able to take that traction to investors, get the money we needed to actually make the product. So when we launched in January, 2017, mm -hmm. we launched to this very dedicated and excited customer base that we built on Instagram. All of these men and women who were following us because they just seen videos and pictures of the product and saw their first influencer, um, saw their influencers um, that they follow talking about it. And so that has really driven so much of what we do to this day when it comes to marketing. That organic tell a friend, feedback, share it within your community, knowing how tight knit uh, people of color communities are has absolutely worked in our favor. And the psychology behind, I have this new product, nobody's talking about it, let me share it with a friend, is even deeper in communities where they feel like they have never been truly served. And so that's worked to our favor. And we've been very thoughtful about growing our influencer community, which Chandra can talk even more about, but also really making both our customers as well as our influencers feel a part of the minted story. We have said from the beginning, we are building this brand together. And I think that's really resonated. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. 
Definitely, definitely. Um, so someone from the community did ask, and I, I think you did touch on this a little bit, but I want to ask, what is, if you had to pick one thing, what is the single biggest thing that you have implemented in terms of advertising that gave you the biggest return? Well, I mean, there was what worked in the very beginning and then there's what's working now because right, everything's an evolution. And mm -hmm. I would say at this point in time, um, it would be it would be three things. It would be our advertising and how to scale that. Um, and then it would be email and text. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. that's great too. Uh, is the, huh? So, sorry, cut you off there. No, I said so Clavio has been very <laughs> helpful. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we try. Um, and I'm so glad you guys are using SMS too. I think that's something that's big that's coming up on the horizon that might even already be here is one of the biggest things that's happening right now. Because I know I get bombarded with texts all the time for companies. Um, so jump into another question here. So you guys aim to create very personalized, friendly and welcoming environment on the channels that you do own. Um, so let's dive into this and look at how you're capturing new customers and nurturing current ones. So I think, um, in Clavio specifically, how are you guys kind of managing that? Well, I would say we, we bucket things in two different ways. So we talk about automation and we talk about campaigns um, together as well as separate. And I think that's actually an important note. I don't know for others who are well-versed in their email marketing or just starting. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a really big distinction that you should treat them as separate and have uh, strategies for, for each area because you, you're not necessarily going to send a campaign email every day and you also, mm -hmm. um, you also don't want to blanket your list in that way either. Uh, so when it comes to automation, we have a pretty robust group of auto flows that we, that we work with um, from the moment we, we get you or don't get you and we're trying to get you to come back to um, you've making a purchase and you haven't purchased in a while and we want you to, we want to win you back to the um, sunsetting campaigns, which can make me cringe to let a subscriber go, but also knowing that, you know, if you're not going to purchase with us, the relationship is just not where it needs to be and it's okay. Um, so once you have that automation and you and you go through everything, we also then take it to the next step and figure out the flow within the flow, if you will. And so it's, okay, she's, uh, she, he, or they have come to us for the first time. Mm -hmm. Where uh, what are they doing? How if they have purchased with us? What did they purchase with us? And then how can we continue that conversation in a personalized way, um, not ending just right there? So it's constantly saying how can you close the loop? And then from a campaign perspective, it's all right. Well, what are some of the things that we want to make sure that we're covering? What's the seasonality? What do we want to make sure that everyone's aware of? Right, like Valentine's Day. Um, but then it's. Who, who and how can we reach them in certain areas that we might not have before? So maybe one person doesn't need something to talk about or doesn't need an email about lipsticks. Maybe they need something that's focused more on our brows and being okay with segmenting in that way. Definitely. And I have a slide that I want to show here too. So it's a quiz on the foundation, I believe. Uh, sorry, it's a nude lipstick and foundation shade finder quiz. Um, so it has a 39% submit rate over the past 30 days, which is fantastic. That is super high for context. A high form submit rate is 6.5%. So you guys are doing amazing. So let me just pull this up so you guys can see it. And if you want to talk through it a little bit and kind of give um, your method behind it, that would also be great. Sure. So it's two, it's two different quizzes. And I think what's important to note here is that you can access this quiz from a lot of different ways, in a lot of different ways. You might see the quiz on our organic social, um, where we're just, you know, letting you know that we have the quiz, feel free to take it. Um, mm -hmm. You will get it from our ads in some case, in some cases, as we're talking about the nude lip and we're talking about your foundation, your first question in your mind is how do I find my right shade? Um, and then I would say, well, and of course our website, you can find it in various areas, but one of the most important things is that from a customer service perspective, both in um, email form, as well as in organic social, if you ask us questions um, in our ads, like in the comments or you mm -hmm. DM us, we will send you that quiz. Oh, that's will help you through it. And in most cases, and even Amanda's in there via email, if you ask us um, to shade match you and send us a photo, we'll actually do that too. But we've created this environment where everywhere you are, we're personalized and coming to you and saying, look, this is the quiz that you can take. But then once you take that quiz and use the quiz, 
you get put into our Clavio funnel. So if you don't purchase, if you don't purchase it, you go into the funnel and we walk you through the why and remind you what your shade is. Um, and if you purchase it from there, we have another flow that takes you uh, into more personalized elements on what you should buy next. And then if you don't buy it, we've got that, you know, stalker like mentality, if you will, in the <laughs> most lovely way, trying to convince you to, you know, of course, buy it. Um, and then even still with our foundation quiz, we'll take further if you're still unsure, because we're really trying to make you feel as comfortable and confident as possible in making your purchasing decisions. We offer that 16 shade sample pack for the foundation. Wonderful. So, yeah. And so um, I see, I saw a question pop up in the chat here and I had this question too. So who are you using to power this um, quiz? What system are you using? Yes, yeah, so currently we're using a company called Lead Quizzes, but we will be changing over soon. Um, as what's really important to, to all of us is that we make sure that you're on our website as long as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that the relationship, whatever you do is here with us. And currently that particular um, vendor doesn't offer that, but the idea still stands true. A quiz that offers you everything, the, the flexibility to make any kind of quiz we would like right? If we want to end up doing bundles for Christmas and we want you to help, we want to help you make your own bundle. How can we personalize that? But then closing that loop, which is something that I kind of always say, closing that loop, what can we do to kind of keep you along the way, whether you have purchased it or not? Definitely. Um, so what kind of segments um, do you have set up to filter that data? Boy, segments on top of segments, on top of segments. There's lots of them. Um, <laughs> Um, we, uh, the segment have include an engaged list and unengaged list. We have a VIP list. We are a segment. We have a win back segment. Um, we even dive down with engagement in different ways. Also, it could be you opening an email, uh, in the past 90 days. It could be, um, espresso shot, which we found we really kind of really love when you open an email within 72 hours, but have not purchased how we can mm -hmm. kind of engage you, uh, it's, it's a laundry list, but those are some of the, the biggest ones that we, that we use. Definitely. Um, so I think that I have another slide here that I want to show. So it's the pop-up on the homepage for 10% off. And if you want to kind of walk me through this one too, here we go. So yeah, I'd love to kind of hear your method behind this as well. Sure. So, I mean, you've got your, your standard pop-up, if you will, when you first come to the site, we want to entice you. Uh, and of course, on the back end, the most important thing is we want to keep you. Um, it's, it's not good enough just to have you go to our site. We, we want to, we want to have a relationship. We want to, we want to become girlfriend, boyfriend, if, if need be, like, let's do this. <laughs> um, get you there. Then there's on the other side, there's the don't go. And so that's, if you're you know, searching our site and you're not really making any, any discerning choices, right? You're not actually going into your cart or maybe you have gone into your cart or you put something in your cart and you're about to leave. That's when I kind of see that don't go mm -hmm. stay. <laughs> and, and then, you know, so we're enticing you with a different offer. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit better. Hopefully that's going to get you to, to sign up and to receive the code. Uh, and then from there, you'll go into a, um, an automation flow that's going to walk you through all the different, or walk us through trying to help uh, convince you to make that purchase. And, or if you have purchased, be more personalized in trying to get you to purchase again. Because, right. So it's not about just getting you to our site. It's about keeping you and being able to have that relationship with you. And then if you have purchased, it's about how can we get you to purchase again? So constantly Definitely. closing yeah. the loop. Yeah, definitely. Loyalty is so important. I um, mean, that's one of those things that those forms really do contribute to. Um, so then while I'm on my slides, I might as well keep going, right? So I also have um, your welcome message here. Um, I believe it's from the founders. Yes, this one. So do you guys want to talk about this one a little bit as well? I, sure, I can talk about that one. Okay. So, you know, for, for us, especially on the marketing side, and hopefully KJ and Amanda feel this way too, we want to remind you that we are we are still a small brand and that we were founded by two women who had a purpose and removing them from that to me just did not ever seem like it made any sense. So making sure from the offset that you get, a, um, that you get this message from them, that's telling you a little bit about the brand, thanking you for coming to, um, to our website, thanking you for making that kind of first purchase, first purchase with us is super important. And it reminds you that you're a part of our family and we're not just like this big box. Mm -hmm. um, 
churning away. You know, we really are looking at every single person and um, trying to figure out how we can make them feel beautiful and confident in their skin. And um, just a little shout out to Amanda. A lot of times she will be the one that's actually writing you back if you have a question. So we are small. That's great practice. Remember. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it goes back to like we were discussing previously is building that loyalty, having that personalization is going to keep people coming back. It just makes sense. Um, so I'll jump off my slides here for a second. Um, so educational content, do you guys focus on that as all at all? Is that something that you talk about? 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we believe our customer in some cases um, is at the start of her main journey because she hasn't been able, she or they have not been able to find what works for them. They're really starting from the beginning. And so we want to make sure that we are being educational along the way so that they do feel confident in what they're going to buy, especially with the first three or four years, um, us not being in a retail location. And mm -hmm. then now, you know, taking it even a step further with COVID, you know, even if we're in uh, retail locations, which we, we are, um, being able to try it is going to be harder. Um, so what is it we can do to make her decision really easy? And so that's where the quizzes come into play, but then that's where the content from the men comes into play, which we have a blog, our blog, um, there's content being posted there. I would say like two to three times a week, actually, we have a very robust YouTube channel, um, with lots of content that you can find based off of your shade that take you through every single product that we have. Um, and we like to call it edutainment. <laughs> it's educational, but it's also but it's also entertaining, and you'll see that in our automation flows as well. Um, if you buy foundation, you're going to go through an automation flow that's going to walk you through how tos. It's going to walk you through um, based off of your foundation. This is the setting powder that you maybe should buy. Based off of that, this is maybe what the bronzer or um, the bronzer or blush that you should buy. So that really step by step, this is how we can kind of help you. And then a video along the way that's going to show you how to actually wear. That's great. That is fantastic. Um, and then jumping into our next question here. Um, so we're going to delve into Clavio a little bit more. Um, so in more email marketing specifically as well. So because you guys have expressed that if Clavio went away today, you'd be in trouble. Um, well, we're not going anywhere, I promise. Um, so let's look at some of your top performing flows and campaigns and answer some of the community's questions. Um, so the first question that comes from the community is, what are your three top performing flows? And I do think I have a slide to go with this as well. I believe it's your welcome series flow, which is yeah. massive and I love it. It's fantastic. So yeah, if you want to walk us through this a little bit. It's a, it's a bit tense, so don't be alarmed <laughs> by it all, guys. Promise it's it makes sense. Um, and it, this goes back to a lot of the things that I've been saying before. It's not just about um, the start of it; it's about closing that loop. So um, what you'll see, what you see here, or can kind of see here is we're wa we're walking through a scenario where he uh, where this customer might not be purchasing, and what would that kind of flow look like? And then it's if they do purchase, not just if they purchase like let's just end the you know end it there but if they purchase what are they purchasing and what complementary elements can we um add on to that so like i said before if they do happen to buy foundation as their first um entry into our you know relationship if you will mm -hmm. do what else can we send what else can we send her are we going to send her a tutorial a video tutorial on how to use it then there's the pairings of that with what's next you know like hey sis you bought you bought this foundation but did you buy your your concealer and your contour shade as well or did you buy your setting powder or if you if you bought um lipsticks then it's okay now that you bought lipsticks what else maybe you should buy liner maybe you should try gloss um so that's really why it looks like that because we're, we're taking every category and looking um, carefully at what that complimentary item might be and what that educational or edutainment um, item should be that we should give to her so that she feels like we're, we're still creating and um, building that relationship. Yeah, no, that's great. And again, that, that is massive. It's insane. Um, I love it and I'm here for it. Um, so let's talk about a little bit too about abandoned cart. So what, I don't have a picture for that one, but what kind of does that look like for you? Um, and how do you go into setting that up and what's your method behind it? So what's our, I didn't hear the first question, but your, your last question was what yeah. was the thought process behind that? Well, yeah, if you just want to kind of talk to me about the abandoned cart. 
Sure. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, when you're trying to when you're trying to sell, the easiest thing is to sell to people who are interested, right? The people are interested but haven't quite finished it through. And so that's where that's where we start. That to me is the low hanging fruit, if you will. So if you're um, going to your if you're going to your cart, what did you put in your cart? How can we entice you to um, buy it? Is it that it's an offer? Is it that you're not sure at, um, because you don't know how to use it? So we give you some education, we give you some tutorials, um, all the different ways. And we A-B test everything, even to our footers, subject lines. Um, so a lot of times you'll see in our flows, lots of different things, but it's us doing the test to figure out what's next. And uh, we review, not that you asked this, but I'm just gonna go into it. Yeah. I, um, my name reviews our auto flows at least once a quarter, taking into account everything that's going on, subject lines, the content, the email, uh, the aesthetic, the footer, the offer, all of that gets checked and balanced um, every quarter and tweaked and fixed. And a lot of times that three month time frame is when we're doing like this to figure out how to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think I did lie. I do have a picture of your abandoned cart email. Um, let me pull it up really quick. Cause I think we were, we were actually chatting about, I have uh, yes. her memory loss. We were chatting about this one. Um, and how, when this does come up, normally there's a picture and it goes through, it has the product that they did leave, right? Correct. It has that product, which is why it looks empty now because yep. you took a snapshot of something without knowing where they're coming from. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, but, but you can, you can see here that we've got, don't forget, return to your cart. There's a flow with it. So there's other ways that we try to entice, um, her to come back. Uh, and then you can see our footer is, a, um, is a bit robust. You can see now at Target. So we're, we're letting you know about that, that we're really proud of that. Um, we've got that quiz because again, um, that's something that we know that people can really feel insecure about and not sure how to go about it. We want to let you know about our free shipping. And we want to let you know if you can't pay now, you can pay later. Yeah, no, and that's great. Um, so then quick question for you. Um, what is it about these flows that you guys have set up? Um, what makes them so successful in your experience? What makes them most successful? I would probably say A-B testing mm -hmm. is what makes them most successful um, and not and not being stagnant. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've had you for two, three years now and um, being able to ask questions, add things, test, take out as we see fit, I think is what's made it most successful. And then figuring out actually the relationship that email has to our other channels, especially with paid advertising, has made that channel more successful because, you know, just assuming that it's coming, that customers are coming from one place, our, the kind of content that we have would be the same if really realize that they're coming from lots of different places and maybe the content would be different based off of that. Definitely. Um, so then I have another question for the community from the community here. Um, what feature in Clavio has been the most instrumental in growing your revenue? So testing, but I would yeah. actually say <laughs> it's not necessarily within Clavio, but our account manager. Mm -hmm. I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> like that I can ask a lot of questions to a human and that a human will write me back and we can have a conversation about it. Um, so, you know, granted, if I'm writing at midnight, I'm not expecting Kate to write me back, like, I know, but we are, we're gonna have a, you know, a deep dive conversation about that. If I'm saying, you know what, I think our happy birthday um, strategy could do better. I think I could be doing better revenue wise from that. Or I'm saying, okay, we only have, you know, this auto flows doing 3% and I really, you know, is there a get to 10%? I can ask her that and, and we have somebody to go back and forth with on how to um, be more successful and to not just say what we're doing is good. Definitely. Um, and then I have the last question from the community. So what are the two of the biggest lessons you've learned since starting email marketing? I know that's a little loaded, so. <laughs> yeah, I would say that automation and campaigns are not the same and you should treat them separately. I think that's been a big one for us because um, that was different from how we were doing it previous with our previous partner mm -hmm. or taking it and deep diving it in it as much as we do now, I, I would say. Uh, closing the loop, which I said a lot today. So that to me is something that, um, We've learned different ways that you can close the loop that, you know, just having the flow is not necessarily enough for us, um, but mm -hmm. we do like to push ourselves. And then 
Oh, that sunsetting's important. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so then we are on to our very last question here before we jump into our activity. So if you could do it all over again, um, what's one thing you would have changed or done differently from the start to build your brand? That's a hard question because I think part of um, the entrepreneur roller coaster, I'm sure even if we did it again, knowing what we know now, there would still be a lesson at the end of that, like at the same point four years later to say, oh, we should have done this other thing. There's just so much newness. So many um, decisions lead to obviously other decisions and definitely other challenges. And I think um, it's, it's hard to distinguish I would say, I think the probably the one thing, if I had to pick, and I would probably have no real control over this, is um, we should have raised more money sooner. I think every founder would probably say that. Again, this is such a resource constrained universe in which to build a company that the more money you can get, it's not always the best because it depends on who it's from. Um, but if it's from the right people, um, it can help you just move that much faster. So for the first, two years of the company, like I said, we launched in January, 2017. So the first two years of the company, I ran marketing and a lot of other things. And so um, were there things that, you know, we could have launched and started sooner or earlier? Absolutely. Like one of the big reasons we decided to move to Clavio is that we had gotten to um, a certain number of subscribers. Mm -hmm. And it finally really started making sense for us to even do segmentation, right? So we were on a different email provider before. We had X number of subscribers. We were growing at a clip, but it wasn't one that justified the platform and all the tools that it had. Once we hit that point, we immediately started doing demos with email, uh, email platforms. And mm -hmm. Clavio just stood out as a real opportunity for us to, to move forward. But we had to get to that point. Um, well, that was one of the decisions we felt like we had to get to. So mm -hmm. I just think more money would have gotten us more places faster. And yeah. I'm sure we would have had other problems, but <laughs> there's always other problems. There's always something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so thank you ladies so much. What a great conversation we had. Um, so many ideas and inspiration. I love that we do this on a Tuesday. It definitely makes me more inspired to conquer the rest of my week that we're doing it so early. Um, so thanks for sharing these amazing tips with our community. Um, so before we get into finding our perfect shade of nude, we want to know if you would recommend the show to others in the community. So this is back to everybody else. Um, so while we get ready for our next segment and getting ready to do our contour and nudes, um, let me run our NPS poll here. And I would love it if you would vote. Um, and in the meantime, Chandra, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you to take us through our nudes and contours and all that good stuff. <laughs> oh, and one other thing to add to, don't forget, you don't want to leave yet. I promise because you want this giveaway at the end. So you want to stay to the end. I promise it's going to be good. So Chandra, now it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, actually, Amanda's going to be giving some things. I'm going to be chit-chatting with Amanda while we talk about finding perfect. your perfect nude lipstick, um, as well as maybe some contouring or foundation shade matching. Great. The more the merrier. <laughs> awesome. Well, so what we have found are the two products that uh, we get the most questions about uh, when it comes to shade matching is our, rather, our foundation and lipstick. So we're going to walk you through our foundation collection a little bit and our lipstick collection and the tips and tricks and tools also, we use along the way to help this, um, to make this easier for customers. So we have a foundation line called Skin by Minted. Uh, we call it that because it is a very hydrating um, foundation. I'll show you the product. It's in a tube form because we know our customer is on the go. She doesn't have time for liquid and brushes and all of the things, a stick will do. Um, you can also use these sticks as uh, concealer or contour. So you just gotta find the right shade. But these six do heavy duty or double duty. They're medium coverage and they're absolutely hydrating. So um, we believe healthy skin is hydrating skin, hydrated skin. So our products, like I said, are very hydrating and give you a slight glow. So we have 16 shades 
Um, and I'm gonna show you one shade from each of our four shade buckets. Um, this is, we have four shades, light, tan, medium, and deep. This is L20 from our light collection. So that's our second lightest shade. This is T20. Yeah, there we go, get me out of the light. T20 from our tan collection, and that's actually my contour shade. This one might be a little harder to see because it's actually my foundation shade. Uh, this one is M30, so medium 30. Each shade bucket has four shades, a 10, a 20, and a 40, which obviously gives us room to grow as we expand. And this shade, D20, is what I use for contour. So this is from the light, tan, medium, and deep bucket. So what we have is a great foundation quiz online that Chandra just mentioned. We use in text, we use an email, we use in customer service, we use in ads, you name it, we use this quiz. It does quadruple duty. Um, and basically it helps walk a customer through what look they're trying to achieve, what is their shade, what is their undertone. We even say like, what star do you admire? All of these kind of things to help whittle down to who is this person, what do they like? Um, You'll notice that of the four shades um, in each shade bucket, they not only go obviously light to deep, but they also represent different undertones. So we're representing the greens and the blues and the reds and the yellows and all the others. And our foundation quiz helps you get there. We also have some other tools online like a um, shade match. Um, so if you use a different brand of foundation, you can always look on uh, that tool to see what uh, minted shade most closely matches a shade you're wearing in another brand. And we keep that actually quite updated. This, just this morning, we added two more um, other brands to that tool. Uh, we also have um, on the shade finder on our site, the ability to click uh, the, the shade, essentially, they're little squares. Uh, click the shade and you can see a model. So you can see what the product actually looks like on someone and not just a color swatch. So we've tried to make it a thoughtful um, interface from kind of no matter how you want to find your perfect shade. But what I'll say again is M30. And Amanda, I have mine. I have oh, mine awesome. as well. Okay, so, so this is my perfect match, T40. Hopefully you can see it, but I guess it's good that you can barely see it because that's that's the whole point. Um, and then our my concealer is L40 and then my contour shade is uh, M30. There you go. And then we also have something that is really amazing. Our founders even thought about this is that sample pack. We have a 16 shade sample pack. It's $5. Um, and so what you can do is you buy the sample pack for $5. You figure out what your shade is from there because it has all 16 shades in like a little bullet form. You can find your foundation, you can find your concealer and you can find your contour. And then when you buy your uh, full size item, you actually get $5 off your purchase. So I think that's helpful. And then some people who take our foundation quiz, they, they think they've got it right, but they're just not sure. And with the sample pack, you can add it on for $1.50. And we have a great return and exchange program. So for whatever reason, you feel like, you know what, that's not the right shade. I'm not T30, I'm actually T40. You shoot us an email. Amanda might be the one that writes you back. Um, <laughs> and you say, you know what, I have the sample pack. Actually, I'm, uh, I'm T40, I'm not T30. Can I get an exchange? And we'll take care of it for you because we just want to make sure you're happy. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a product that I'll say we didn't launch until year three. Um, well, yeah, we launched in 2019-ish, I guess, year three. Um, because we wanted to make sure that not only uh, did we have the customer's trust in launching this product for all of you who actually wear makeup, but you can attest that you really have to trust a brand. This is one of the stickiest products in beauty. So until a brand has your trust, you're most likely not going to uh, try them. So that's something to think about in your product development cycle. Um, and then the other thing uh, that we really thought about with this, with this product is again, we wanted to solve everyday beauty issues. So not only are we representing 16 shades, which is fundamental to our inclusive beauty view of the world, but also it's in a stick because we know our girl is a novice. She wants to make putting on makeup easy. We have all of these tools online. We have tutorials, we have quizzes, we have 
24 seven, essentially customer service, so much that it's going to help you ultimately get to the right shade because we want it to be easy because we are DTC first. So we really try to think through that product from all facets. And I encourage you, particularly if you're thinking of a, call it more complicated product for your consumer to think about all ways in which they enter your universe that they can be helped. Um, the and then we have product. Oh, really quickly a minute. And then we also have, um, a, a full scope guide. So if you find, if you figure out what your foundation is, we actually have a guide that will showcase what your concealer shade should be and what your contour shade should be. So you don't have to use the sample pack to do that too. So like get one and then you like got the rest, you know, with one of our guides. We probably have a lot more guides than maybe we need, but you want to, you know, make sure that she understands everything and feels com comfortable every step of the way regardless. So comparison guide, you got your concealer contour foundation guide. We even have a guide for our bronzer that helps you figure out based off of the bucket that you um, that you fill within foundation, you'll know which bronzer to purchase as well as that the same thing for our setting powders. So keeping it awesome. very educational for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's the world of foundation. We are going to go to the world of lipstick. So um, we launched with, we launched into 2017 uh, with six nude and neutral lipsticks uh, because fundamental to my co-founder and I was this idea that nude lipsticks should be this beauty staple. It's this thing that you pull out day after day, whether it's a wedding or an anniversary or a baby shower or just a conference at work, whatever it is, every person should have this new lipstick that gives them just a bit of a bit of a pop, a little bit of color on top of their already everyday nude and neutral look, um, that real go-to. And we did not feel like that existed uh, for women of color. And trust me, we looked high and low about every product out there. Um, so that was our, our first problem that we wanted to solve. And it was our first product. And we launched six um, shades in January, 2017. And then quickly that June, 2017, we launched three more shades. And the way we got to those shades is we said, okay, we are not, we acknowledged in a way that other beauty brands have not, we are not the center of our universe. So we invited all of our friends and family that looked very different and looked uh, like literally the shades of the rainbow to help us create these six shades. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a few. First, I'm gonna show you our top three shades um, and a little tip on how you can find your perfect nude and then I'll show you some other shades. So again, we have nine nude and neutral uh, lipsticks. They come in a semi-matte finish, as well as a matte finish, and in a matching lip liner. So we got you either way, any way really you want to see them. So these are our top three shades. Um, this is Nude La La, which is a really pretty pink with a brown base. So, so many women want to wear a pink, but it's often ashy because it's a white base. Ours is a brown base. Um, this is Dope Taupe, which is a brown with a pink base. Um, I have lipstick on right now, but if you saw my lips, they are mainly brown with some pink. And so that's why Dope Taupe is perfect for me. Um, and the third top shade here is mint number five, which I do have on. It's one of our namesake shades. Um, and it's a brown with a purple. So if you look to your women of color friends, you'll see, and this is true for everyone, there is no one nude, right? Nude is a concept, it's not a color. And so from the beginning, we knew we needed to come out with a range, not one shade. Oh, somebody said Dark Knight is their joint. Yes, that is uh, much deeper this way, but there is a nude for everybody. And what you're looking to do is either match your lip tone. So if your lips are um, like mine and they're mainly brown with some pink, Dope Taupe is a great shade that's going to help highlight that brown and pink. Or we have some lighter shades. We have, um, I think this is, yep, Peach Please, which is like a peachy, corally tone. Um, we have Pretty in Pink for the kind of poppier pink shades. So again, we are representing the concept and range that is nude. So there is something for everybody. So that's one, you can kind of match your lips. The other thing that you want to make sure when it comes to nude, is that you're looking for something that is a multifaceted color. When it comes to skin tone, nothing is flat. And I think this is where the beauty industry has gotten it wrong for so many years, trying to make everyone just into a color swatch. When the reality is, depending on the light, depending on my mood, depending on my tan, you're gonna see a lot of different shades on me at any given moment. And so you want a new lipstick that has that kind of variation. It's not just pink, it's pink and brown, it's brown and purple, it's 
it's there's some sort of multifaceted view of it um, to make it dy as dynamic as your skin naturally is. So those are our two tips. Um, look for something that matches your lip tone. Look for something that isn't flat and has some dimension. Shonda, man, want to share your favorite? Well, we're both wearing we're both wearing mented number five actually we didn't we didn't talk about that guys we did not talk about that so two different people two different shades so my bucket is tan her bucket is medium we're both wearing mented number five on our lips playing vanna right now um <laughs> and then i have two shade i have two shades here my my light's not really working but perfect nude is actually dope taupe that's my, that's my staple, that's my perfect nude. And then this one should be meant to number five. And then I actually also wear foxy brown an awful lot, which is more of like an orange brown, let's see. Yeah, it's like a muted red brown or muted brick brown. Yeah, so you can kind of see that, there you go. Yeah, you can see that there. Sorry, my lighting is so bad right now. It's the end of the day. Um, but I think what, I, what I'd like to say is that pink is not a nude for everyone. Pink is not a nude for everyone. Um, and, and the nude lipsticks for Men of Color is actually one of the reasons that I joined the brand. I was like, I'm all, I was always looking for uh, a, a black nude, if you will, for everything, like shoes, lipstick, like the whole nine, you know. I was always looking for, always buying it. And so when I found out that this exists, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to work for them. I have to be able to tell this story and make everyone feel beautiful, right? Because there's nothing worse than saying, I want that too, and feeling like, when you go to the store, that me too moment for you is not the same as everyone else. Um, so that's my version. It's my little story. Yeah, no, this has been great, ladies. Thank you so much. It's so informative. Um, and a totally different look at the cosmetics and beauty industry that you don't get to see every day. So it's really inspiring to see this kind of unravel in front of us. It's always, it's fun. Um, so before everybody goes, we want to do this giveaway. So what you're going to be winning today is a build your own trio worth $45, um, right from Mente Cosmetics. So I believe it's three nude lipsticks. Am I right here, ladies? Correct. But it's, it's of your choice because again, I'm not, we don't want to choose for you. That's, that's a decision that you should make and what makes you happy. So you get to choose the three. We'll send it to you. Perfect. Um, so we have our giveaway question here. So if you know the answer to the question, when I say it, throw it into the chat and then we'll go from there. Um, actually, I'll have either Chandra or Amanda, Amanda say the question if you want to. Go for it. Chandra, go ahead. When were we founded? Oh, oh, that was fast. Ooh, this always <laughs> happens. And it looks like we have a winner. It's Emily Trower Young. Emily, you have definitely been a loyal live from your laptop follower and you have definitely won multiple times. So good for you, girl. That's <laughs> exciting. Um, perfect. So Emily, I will follow up with you through email um, and I will get your information. But otherwise, I just wanted to say a massive, massive Thank you to Amanda and Chandra for popping in today and dealing with our technical difficulties. I applaud you so much and thank you so much for sticking with us through this um, and the whole Mented family at that too. Um, we are honored that you chose Clavio to share your journey with um, and we're very excited to see what you guys do next. We're always watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I promise everybody next week, Morgan will be back, your favorite host, and I will fall back into the background where I'm supposed to be. Um, but for now, thanks for bearing with me and dealing with me last second hosting. I really do appreciate it. Um, so, but Live From Your Laptop would not be what it is today without you guys and all of your support. So thank you for tuning in. Um, it's truly you guys that inspire us every day to do better. Um, so next week, we are keeping the Black History Month celebrations going with Grace Aaliyah. That is our last um, Black History Month episode, I believe. Um, so this brand is really cool, and we're really excited to feature them. Um, we've also got our February edition of Community Chat coming up. This is another hour-long event where you'll hear from a panel of community experts on a trending topic. This month, we're talking all about relationship building and customer love. And then we split up into small breakout groups to talk shop with similar industries. So tomorrow is that community chat. What we'll do is we'll put it 
the last minute registration info and the follow-up email. So everybody will get that. So you can attend if you'd like. Um, it's a ton of fun. And then I also believe that you are all getting a promo code to Mented Cosmetics after this. So that will also be in that thank you email and you can pick up some perfect nudes for yourself. Um, so cheers, everyone. Have a great rest of your week and we will see you next time on Live From Your Laptop. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.